Welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. I am just one of your humble hosts, Sean Boyle, and with me it's Ashley Mock. And welcome to the half hour radio program that airs every Sunday on 1045 The Flame at 10 a.m., but also because of a wonderful partnership with St. Lucie Public Schools, our little radio program appears as a television program on WLX TV. If you're listening on the radio, find that television station at your local cable provider or do what I do, which is what my son taught me. Go to YouTube because that's how he watches TV. Look up WLX St. Lucie. You'll find all the programming that St. Lucie Public Schools offers as well as this show. And actually, this show on video goes back over nine years. It goes back too far. Ashley was I... in middle school at that time. <laughs> that's right. That's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, by all means, uh, check out the past shows and, and see if we've grown um, from a broadcast standpoint. We have. Uh, hint, we have not. <laughs> but welcome to the show. It's all about connecting you, the listener, and the viewers to resources and things that are available in our great community we call St. Lucie County. Now, we at the Children's Services, Ashley, myself, the entire team, our board, obviously not media professionals, but what we work on in the community is five priorities. And those priorities are, one, making sure every baby's a healthy baby. Two, stopping child abuse before it happens. Three, keeping <laughs> kids off the streets. I'm, I'm getting your head nods in there. Four, <laughs> keeping kids in school. And five, keeping them off drugs, alcohol, and other risky behaviors. And we focus on those priorities by developing and funding programs that are available to all families in St. Lucie County. And those pri priorities we talk about frequently. There are a couple other things that we kind of, throughout the year, focus on. And obviously one of those is happening right now. Because if you haven't heard, there's like, Three weeks left of school? Two. Yeah, uh, a, I don't know. I'm married to a teacher. There's a countdown. There's a, going there's on. a countdown in my house also. Um, but summer is coming, and we have an extensive network of programs that also serve children in the summer. All of our after school programs turn into summer learning programs, and then we also have some additional ones. So this is a reminder too that all of that information is on our website about all the programs and the priority areas that Sean talked about plus summer. And we actually have a really fancy new website that you can go find all of that information on. So if you visit us at cscslc.org, you can check out the new look of our website, find all of those summer learning programs and any other programs that you might be looking for for your family. And the, the fun thing about the website, and, and big kudos to you for redesigning it, it's, a, it's easier, it's cleaner looking, not that it wasn't clean or easy looking before, but even more so now. But <laughs> We actually, our whole team got headshots. So now you can see what the team members of Children's Services Council look like, and that's not why I bring it up. My, my favorite part about the headshots were the outtakes that we're eventually oh, going to share, right? I'm sitting on those for special occasions because so, there are some good ones. Sandy and I, if you don't know Sandy Mack, who works for us, we replicated the Step Brothers uh, pose in our headshots. There were some like glamour shot type photos happening. Yes. We had a really great time. Shout out to our photographer, Tina, because bless her heart, I don't think she knew what she was signing up for. Uh, but we, we had a really good time. Many of the team had many questions about what goes into a headshot. So and many. They, they didn't realize that it's over like 30 seconds. <laughs> so many which questions. Which includes this guy. All right. <laughs> But less about that, what you can find on our uh, website, I forgot to bring the program guide. Oh, man. Well, that's not correct. I remembered it. It's just in the office, and I didn't get a chance <laughs> to get to the office before we record it. But I did have with me our annual report, which is still available on the new fancy website, as you put it. Uh, by all means, we ask that uh, if you get a moment, and it's, it's meant to be read in five minutes or less, a lot of pictures, a lot of graphs, but it shows the impact of not just the Children's Services Council and not just our funded programs, but what we collectively as a community uh, were able to do in regards to children, uh, helping children uh, last year. And it's a great read. And what I like about it, besides it being simple and lots of graphs for us non-readers, uh, is the success stories. Because behind every number, behind you know every reduction of child abuse, behind every increase in academics, there is a success story. There is a, a child, a family behind that that number, if you will, and we share some of those in here. They're really good stories, too. So, yeah. so uh, and the that. other thing, you know, I was going to throw in, like, because you said it's summer, and you said, you know, summer is coming, <laughs> and I was going to do winter is coming, you know, tying the Game of Thrones. And then you talked about I don't this, know anything about that. You so talked I'm about not. the summer <laughs> programs turning into, and I was thinking Transformers, because, you know, wow. summer is movie blockbuster time. Oh, right. But also say. summer is the time where we partner with the Mets. It is, because 
summer is baseball time, I feel like, too, right? That's like a thing. Um, but we boys have a, of summer. That's <laughs> the expression, the boys of summer. Uh, we have a really exciting event coming up with the St. Lucie Mets. Um, we have done lots with them. They've been great partners to us over the years, always supported our literacy initiatives, but we're really excited. We're doing kind of a swing into summer reading event with them. So on Saturday, May 27th, you can come out. Um, we will be there about an hour before games, game time. Game starts at 6.10. Gates will open at 5 o'clock, and you can come, and you can meet a lot of our summer program providers. You can meet a lot of chamber member businesses that will be there. We're doing this event in partnership with the chamber. The big thing to remember is that every child and a guest will get in for free. They will get a free ticket, and every child who comes through those gates will be able to choose hopefully five books to kind of kick off their summer reading. So we're really excited about that. It's a, a big goal of ours to get as many books out into the hands of children in our community as we can. And so we hope you'll join us for that event. And the reason why Ashley said, hopefully, uh, did hopefully. I do that voice pretty good? Hopefully, uh, <laughs> is because uh, we plan on bringing 5,000 books over to yeah. the stadium. So if and you're bored as right before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're wondering what our boardroom looks like right before, it looks like an Amazon distribution center. but. <laughs> Uh, what we'll do is we're hoping to give out all our while supplies last yes. get, we plan to give out 5,000 books yes so that information is also on our website it's also on Facebook so if you want to share and invite friends to come with you if you're a radio listener and you've never watched the TV version you could come see us in person oh wow. and if you tell us you listen to the radio program we'll give you a high five <laughs> that's about all we can <laughs> that's all we can afford yeah that's it that's all we got <laughs> so uh, we for our radio show uh, listeners and podcast listeners, I <laughs> forgot to say that this is also a podcast. Just whip out your phone and I, mean, I guess you could We're do it on your computer, but whip out your phone and look, open up your podcast app, including those that, of you that have iPhones, and just look up Community Connections with Children's <laughs> Services Council. It'll pop up. But where we last left off, we were on a cliffhanger last week. <laughs> uh, we, we are fortunate to have uh, professionals from Helping People Succeed to talk about mental health and mental health awareness, hence the reason why I am wearing green, because <laughs> green is the color for mental health awareness month. Just really digging that. And, I, and I just want to point out that I am the only one wearing green because while I was not smart enough to bring a program guide with me, I was smart enough to wear green for mental health awareness. But we have two yeah. great guests to talk about and continue our conversation about yes, mental health. continue our conversation. There was obviously, I think we sort of started that conversation with, we'll never be able to cover this all in one show. Um, but so, we're going to try. <laughs> but we're going to try anyway. Um, and, and just as a reminder too, we're going to mention, I think several times in this conversation, resources that are available um, to children and to families in our community. Um, but I think one of the most important things, not just this month, during Mental Health Awareness Month is that we continue this conversation. We continue having this conversation, not just during the month of May when Sean is wearing green, um, <laughs> but all the time, that, that we continue keeping this kind of top of mind for everybody um, because, and we talked a little bit about this last week, there, there has been some historical stigma around mental health and accessing mental health services. I feel like it's kind of going away a little bit. I don't know if you. I, feel I that have way a theory too. behind this. You I do. think the younger generation. <laughs> yeah. The the uh, uh, I would say the the 25 and younger they're going to be the generation that dispels the uh, myths behind mental health, and and I say that because we've seen that firsthand. They've told we've us. We've seen youth <laughs> tell us this directly. Yeah. So I don't know, ladies, where if we drew straws today, who wants to start? Well, let, let, let them introduce themselves to start. How about that? Yeah, yeah. So let, <laughs> let's start there. If anybody wasn't wasn't in tune with us last week, um, talk to us about who you are, um, where you're from, and what your role is there. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Carmela Moore. I'm clinical director at Helping People Succeed. Um, so. I do, I do all sorts of things. We've got uh, a number of therapists that uh, that I meet with and supervise, and um, I also see clients. I still have a small caseload and still work as a clinician, um, but uh, any any number of things I do in a, in a day, including being on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. <laughs> well done. Yes, we wear many hats. Uh, I'm Meralda Jerome. I'm the Assistant Clinical Director at Helping People Succeed. Um, I work with the interns. I work in the schools. So, yes, yeah, so I may not, um, I do have a small caseload as well um, through the interns, you would say. 
I'm also overseeing the summer camp this year, oh. Camp Success, Yay. with um, helping people succeed. Yes. That's very exciting. That's one of our, I mean, we talk about them a lot, a lot in the <laughs> community, um, but I know that they're, they do great service for kids. Um, over the summer. Just a reminder, if you're interested in Camp Success, you can find more info about it on our website. <laughs> Quick plug. So let, before we get into, because we, we, we actually do a little prep before the show. That may surprise <laughs> some people, but we do actually do a little prep. But before we talk about kind of the heavy topic that we wanted to address or bring up, can you just define for our, our, our viewers what, when we say mental health, what that means? And I realize that this is a big question. <laughs> huge question. Um, it's really just kind of an overall sense of well-being and uh, mental health kind of um, manifests in our in our thoughts, in our feelings, in our behaviors, and it's just kind of a balance. You know, we we know that life is difficult and life is tough, and you don't get through throughout life with with difficulties or struggles. But it's just overall being able to manage what comes comes at you and feel pretty good about yourself and function pretty well in the world. Um, yes, I definitely agree. The only thing I want to add, you know, is just it's having a healthy mind, you know, um, healthy brain, if I might even say that. Yeah. And I do, I think it's, you know, as we talk about this conversation, obviously we're sort of looking at it as the lens of for our children, right? Um, that it looks different and it looks different as they age it looks different as they develop we I think sometimes get into a habit of saying like oh my my teenagers not coming out of their room every day because that's just what teenagers do mm -hmm. and that there's a very fine line there I think between what is expected as like normal teenage behavior and when to be concerned and so as a parent what are there some tips or some ideas about specifically when you're when you're looking at your kids like when are we concerned about them what what should we be paying attention to if if there's changes in their behavior if we have concerns about them we definitely encourage parents to keep the lines of communication open you know with your children um, teenagers are going to be secretive or can be secretive but definitely try to just talk to them and you know ask questions even if there may be easy questions for us adults but for them it's you know hard questions just talk to them and see where they are at what's going on with them and find out as much as we can even though it's possibly little from them <laughs> getting little from them and just really looking for behavior that changes abruptly or is just outside of the norm um, you know, I generally say, well, if you, you know, you have a child who always does what they're supposed to do and is always compliant and always then be concerned. Kids are going to act out and, and adolescents are going to push boundaries. That's expected and we want them to. That's how they kind of build strength and move toward independence. But just something just outlandish, a sudden change in grades, a sudden change in sleep habits or, or mood. Um, but I, yeah, I think it is important to be able to have that communication with your kids so they feel like they can come to you. And, and I think it's important, actually, that you ask that question because, you know, it, well, we've talked about mental health before. We always compare it to the medical health, right? Like if you fall and your arm hurts, you go to the doctor, they take an x-ray, they can say definitively, most times, definitively, <laughs> I can tell you a story about that, definitively your arm is broken or not, right? For mental health, to your point, it's not like, you know, this happened, although sometimes it happens, mm -hmm. so, uh, tr something happens, you don't know what's going on, and, and you both brought up the importance of communication with your child, and I will advocate for, and you can tell me this is right or wrong, uh, <laughs> when your kids are younger, and I, you know, I'm, I'm saying, you know, maybe middle school or not, I'm going to say that they probably have a phone. Yeah. Maybe not. I know, you know, I saw <laughs> that, I saw that expression. Uh, we had to give our kids phones at an early age because of the bus stop. You know, you want to make sure that they have a way to communicate because you can't always be with them during that time. And I was a big advocate that I, it was my phone. I'm letting you borrow it. So it's a privilege to have it. And I, they had to return that phone to me every night to charge it. And I would go through their text messages. I, I let's be honest, with my daughter, it was my wife because I couldn't. <laughs> at one point, I had to tap out. It was too much for me. But, uh, but I know that's not trust building but it also it kind of gives you an insight that maybe and we told them straight out that, that well, we we're going to do it 
and and that's I think the thing that that's important. That's the key because mm -hmm. it's not it's not breaking it's their not trust. It's not secretive. Right. We told them straight up. Yep. It's not breaking their trust if they know the expectation going into and, it. And I, I, all I'm leading to is, and the reason why I bring that story up is, um, with my son, uh, we had to engage in in mental health services at, at a relatively early age because we we are going through a stuff, not being secretive because we told them. You know, and and he had written down, you know, questions about life, like why do we even have to live if we're gonna, you know, die and all that stuff. And I don't think that would have come out in a conversation if I had sat down and said, "Hey, how's it going?" <laughs> but reading that, you know, that sets off alarm bells, right? Right. Um, you know, and rather be safe than sorry. And I know that's a <laughs> dramatic expression, but for that, but uh, um, you know, we were able to. Uh, talk to the schools about it and, and get help and get mental health support. And, but none of that would have come in, into play if we had just been like, he's good, yeah. we, we, you know, he, he's doing his chores, he's good, right? <laughs> like, yeah. you gotta, if, you, if your child isn't super engaged in conversation, there's other ways to, find, and I'm not trying to be like secretive or going behind <laughs> yeah. the kid's back, be open and honest about it, but you gotta look for clues everywhere, I right. guess is what and I'm trying frankly, to say. And frankly, I support that as a parent. We have to monitor our children, especially online activities. You know, and as parents, we're supposed to guide them. You know, they're not always gonna know the things to bring to us, you know, that they're not supposed to do or that may be concerning. So, yeah, that's part of the job, <laughs> to monitor. So, let, let's, and I know I'm terrible about this. This is a long way for me to get to a question <laughs> I was gonna ask. So, let's say you, you both said, important thing to do is check up on your child have that conversation with them but let's say you know that, that your child is is his behaviors changed right maybe he's not coming out of his room as you described or his grades are going down what how do you instigate that conversation and particularly let's be more direct about it what if you're concerned that there might be self-harm or worst case scenario you know contemplating suicide there's so much to unpack in everything <laughs> you just said. Um, and in five minutes or left. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I think we've got a model for our children talking about mental health, talking about our thoughts, talking about our feelings, and that it's okay to have ups and downs. And um, because a lot of young people see their parents as perfect and they start to struggle and they wonder what's wrong with me, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, having conversations often uh, about uh, difficulties and mental health and struggles and being open about our own, um, I think you can talk to a lot of professionals. I guess you said, how do you start the conversation <laughs> with your kids? And I'm like, I think it should be ongoing. I don't think wait until there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Always right. be open and make sure they know they can talk to you about things. And I don't know if you, if you want to jump in. You so jump far, in. I, I'm but, with but you. That, but that's good. That's, that's a good yeah. starting point because if a, if a family hasn't done that yet, Right, and they're watching and, and, and or viewing, watching or listening. Sorry, <laughs> uh, now's the time to maybe you know in conversation. And, and I think what I'm hearing you say is they can talk about what's happening to them, not like, hey man, I don't know if we're gonna be able to pay rent today. Not like that, <laughs> but like, more of like, hey, I'm struggling today, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, you know, kind of being open about their own mental yeah. health, if you will. Yeah, and normalizing. Um, uh, struggles and being able to talk openly about it because um, childhood, adolescence, it's so tough and they go through so many changes. You know, you just think about the differences between a seven year old and a nine year old and an 11 year old. They're like a different person and that's a lot to deal with. You know, at some time, at some point in adulthood, we kind of level out a little bit and go through changes a little bit slower, but they're just changing all the time. And then that adolescence, when I'm not really a child and I'm not really an adult, it's a difficult time and just talking about how that's normal. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think too, you know, social media, you kind of talked about this a little bit, the connectivity that they have that's so different than we experienced mm -hmm. when we were growing up. I mean, I, I got my first cell phone when I was 16 and it was attached to my car. Like it didn't come inside with me. People couldn't text me all night long and I think there's such a difference for them now where, you know, something happens at school and they don't get away from it when they come home. It, it continues. And so I think the conversation about the monitoring, you know, making sure that they know that they can come to you with problems, having 
that connection with them outside of the conversation about mental health is so important. Like they have to feel connected to you to feel comfortable coming to you with those kinds of conversations. And so Sean kind of alluded to like, how do you start that conversation? But if we, if we get to that conversation, we still feel like there's more that needs to be done or we do need to reach out to a professional. Well, is there a suggestion as to like the first step to make or is it call HPS or call whoever that you know? Like, is there a good first Calling 911. <laughs> <laughs> Calling 911. It's not always for, you know, physical danger sometimes. Well, I mean, in, in the case of self harm or suicide, um, I think go, just going back to the question, parents can be direct. If you ask them, you're not putting it in their mind. You're not putting it in their head as if, oh, they weren't thinking about it. Now, I, you know, if I do that, I'm going to. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I was <laughs> actually hoping you would say that because I've <laughs> yes. heard that like oh don't i didn't want to bring it up, up because i mm -hmm. want to give them that nope. idea no be direct, be direct is what i'm hearing yes, yes definitely be direct and then more often than not the teenagers the kids they are honest mm -hmm. about it and then you can you know the parents then call 911 call mobile crisis unit you know based on how familiar they are with the system um if it's not an emergency call us <laughs> <laughs> you know and we'll get you connected with services Yes. And, and that's a good, let's, you know, let's stop for a moment. Give out your number because if they're listening, <laughs> yeah. they're like, maybe I do need to call. Now would be a good time to give out that phone number. 772-320-0770. You know, and I can remember, you know, and, and my kids are adults now. Um, I can remember we purposely, because I think we read it somewhere, or maybe we're having a conversation with a mental health professional, because sometimes kids feel more open to talk to another caring adult as opposed to the parents you know maybe particular and, and i if now that i think about this is particularly around uh their sexual health a lot of times they feel more comfortable talking to yeah. a friend and i can remember we purposely introduced uh both my kids to a, a friend of ours and we kind of like strategically started hanging out together with them right. and just and, and it and it, and it uh, this, for lack of a better word it took it, for one of my kids she yeah. actually confided more in, into this yeah. person and that person regular you know they weren't hiding anything we weren't breaking any confidences but mm -hmm. it gave us direct insight and i remember thinking okay there is some uh truth to that theory of making sure that your child has caring adults uh, that they can talk to because sometimes it's hard to have those parental conversations well and i think too i mean to your point you know i i have a not exactly similar situation my children were adopted from foster care my oldest daughter absolutely has some block in talking to me about certain things going on in her life and I know that and for that reason we have she's been in therapy consistently because she needs somebody to talk to and so you know I it was challenging at first to accept that I'm not going to be the person she comes to talk to and that's okay it's okay that it's not me as long as she has somebody and so we work really hard on building our relationship outside of those conversations um, so that she's starting to feel more comfortable bringing, bringing those kinds of ideas to me. Um, but it's not the same for every kid. And you know, it, it's not the same for your own kids in your house. It's not gonna be the same. So I think understanding where the resources exist um, when you do think, you know, maybe I need some help. Maybe I need, as a parent, somebody to just remind me that I'm, I'm doing the right things, I'm on the right path. And so to have resources like Helping People Succeed and other organizations that we work with, um, you know, in our network that, that are available to help children and families is so important. And again, just keeping this conversation going, not stopping this conversation right. because it's not Mental Health Awareness Month anymore, <laughs> um, just continuing to have that talk. Yeah. And something I want to add to what you say, um, Ashley, is parents when you have your children in therapy sometimes it's okay for you to also get the support <laughs> right it's not just a child that needs the support sometimes you need it as well just maybe to help guide how to have that conversation with them and, and things like that so that can be helpful that's a great point <laughs> um, our therapist has been excellent with us about every six to eight weeks we schedule a parent meeting mm -hmm. and we just sit down and kind of digest where we're all at at the moment and it's so helpful yeah so let's you know we got a few minutes left on the show you've given out your number which i'm going to ask you to give out again <laughs> but if somebody you know is watching or or listening i got it right this time <laughs> watching or listening and they're like you know 
I need to maybe call somebody because I have concerns about my child or I have concerns, you know, like you said, the family dynamic, maybe they themselves or the family unit. Uh, if I make that call, because sometimes the hardest thing to do sometimes is to ask for help, right? Because, you know, you got to take that leap, right? You got to, and, and that's the stigma we're trying to break and the whole point <laughs> of this. So I, I make that call, what happens? Well, you call, and the, the first thing is, if you call our agency, you're going to schedule an intake. So, again, it's not an emergency. In an emergency situation, you're going to call an emergency number, 911 or 988 is the suicide or emergency mental health number. You're going to call 211 for other resources in your community. But for us, it's kind of like, no, I think it's time to get kind of involved in some help or get some support. You call our number, you schedule an intake, and then we just kind of take you through a process of getting information, getting background information, and getting you assigned to services. Because we have therapy, we also have targeted case management, and we have uh, psychiatric services, so medication management. So um, that would be the starting point. So the, the back, and, you know, I hate to get this granular, but you know, so the background, I call and say, hey, I want to schedule uh, 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 a therapy session, you know, explain the situation. So the background information is obviously your name, your address, you know, who, you know, the family dynamic or the family unit, that kind of information. Mm -hmm. Just to get started, just some background information, why you were referred or if you're referring yourself and kind of what the main issue is. And then you come in for an intake, which is kind of can be a lengthy process because we're going through history mm -hmm. because it all matters. We'll, we're going to talk when a, when a child or an adolescent or even a parent, uh, an adult comes in, we talk about everything from when your mother was pregnant with you. Yeah. That pregnancy <laughs> and that pregnancy. birth, we want to talk about everything because it has an impact. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. In those early months, you know, mm -hmm. with a, a adopted or uh, foster children, that those early months, those early years are really um, really important in development. So we're going to kind of get a whole history, a family history, and um, and go from there so we can fix I, you. I think, too, the other thing that's important about therapy is establishing what what success looks like for you. Yes. So if you're reaching out for help, what what is your goal with that? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what does it look like a year from now when you think, you know what, that was the right move for me, this is what I needed to happen in my life? Um, and so having that conversation when you first reach out and are thinking about, re you know, accessing help, um, I think that's really important to, to recognize, like, what, what do I want to be a year from now? How do I want to feel a year from now? Because um, that, that's an important piece of it, too. That's what we call the, our treatment plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I know we're winding down here. I know we, did, we don't have much time. I feel like we could do four shows about yeah, this. Yeah, we could. Certainly so could. join us for the whole month of May, Wally. You know? uh, but uh, I, I do think that it's important, and, and I don't want to be the one to say it, but uh, it's important that we take mental health serious. And there's no harm in, you know, and we talked about this on the radio program last, last week, but, you know, you're supposed to go and get a physical or at least do your health risk assessment. They do the blood work, <laughs> make sure you're okay. There's no harm in checking in. You know, the, you know, the best case scenario is they call you, they schedule the intake, and maybe it's only one or two sessions and, and all is good. Right. No harm, no foul. I mean, yeah. that's not the right <laughs> word, but no harm, no foul. So before we go... Uh, give out your number so that they know their resource. It's 772-320-0770. We ask Thank everybody you. to make sure that uh, you check in on your kids, have those conversations, ask them how they're feeling, be direct is what I heard as well, but do not ignore mental health because it's so important, not only in the month of May, but it's actually pointed out all year round because we can wear green anytime we want. <laughs> all right, folks, thank you for tuning in. It's a weekly radio program on The Flame, 104.5 The Flame at 10 a.m. If you miss that, don't worry. We have a podcast. Just look up Community Connections with Children's Services Council and a reminder that it's our children, our community, our future. Now more than ever, folks, we're all in this together. We'll see you next time.